Brother Kevin of Cameroon 3 Conversation with Jesus Christ My dear, I was taken to hell, a place of desolation, pain, and sadness. I cried to the Lord in despair, and He delivered me from that dark place. And the Lord took me to a garden of paradise full of blooming trees and evergreen leaves, where I saw the Lord who invited me to join Him in that blossoming garden. I felt so good in the hand of the Lord, and I could feel His love. And this love was so perfect that no one on the earth can offer this love. No one on the earth loves us like the Lord. This love of God is indescribable, and we won't give it its value if we define it using human language. This love is above our understanding and surpasses our logic and comprehension. The only word we can employ to describe it is perfection. I felt this love penetrating all my being. And I felt like a child, comforted in the hand of his father. The Lord said, I love all my children, and I don't want them to go where you were stuck in the flame. But my children don't love me, for they don't keep my words. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. The Lord asked me, Do you know why I revealed myself to you? I said, Lord, it's because I have asked you all this. And I fasted and prayed to have them. The Lord said, Your desire was different. You desired my presence differently from others. And you have so much faith that you fasted to have it. Others desire only miracles, solutions, and healing and to have the power. They want to perform miracles, predict the future, and cast out demons. They have faith for these things, they do not have faith for the least things. You have faith for the least things and you believe that I can give it to you. You fasted and persevered in prayer to the end in order to see me but many are fasting and praying not because they want me, but because they want things that I give instead of seeing me. But you prayed for the least thing, which is to see me and you got it. I gave you a lot. That is why the one who lifts himself will be brought low, and the one who lowers himself will be lifted up. You must desire the least thing which is to see me for when you desire me instead of things that I give, you will obtain great things. In your Bible, it is written, if anyone comes to me and does not separate from his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Many have not understood these words. They are telling me I cannot ask them to separate from their parents. Remember, I have told you to honor your father and mother. What I told you is mentioned three times in the scripture and these words come from me. I am asking you to separate from your loved ones so you can come to me, for many are going to the flame of torment because they love their wives, husbands, children, brothers, and sisters and their lives more than me. That is why they are falling in the place of torment. You were in hell and saw children who were tormented because of their parents. If a person can lead you to hell, he is playing the role of Satan who also wants to lead you to hell. I say to you today, there is nothing more important to desire for a man than the kingdom of heaven. When you don't have a child or a husband or a wife, if you have no families, and no houses and nothing to eat, and no clothes to wear, if you don't even have anything in the world but if you have the kingdom of heaven, you have all things. For what you could not have on earth, you will get them all in the kingdom of heaven. So don't be sad for what you lose now, but be happy for what you will have in the kingdom of heaven and what you couldn't have on earth, you will get one hundredfold in the kingdom. So don't be sad about what you lose now but be happy with what you will have in the afterlife. And even now I won't let you fatherless. What you lose because of me you will find in the present century and in the kingdom of heavens. You must not leave the world now but you have to live in order to continue my work and save my children who are still lost and scattered. You were spared from carrying heavy burdens. 
but I tell you today you must strive to carry heavy burdens that are difficult for fear that by carrying light burdens, you end up being caught along the way. You now must know your goals and the consequence of these goals. If you don't have a goal, you are an infidel. If your goal is not the kingdom of heaven, you are an unbeliever. Anyone among you that sin and does not want to repent, let him be considered an unbeliever because his goal is not the kingdom of heaven. If someone listening to these warnings that I give him does not repent, he will never repent. If you do not come to church for the kingdom of heaven, you are a bunch of unbelievers for the kingdom of heaven causes people to repent. You got to know what you want and why you are here. My dear, we were still in the garden when the Lord told me, the world government is already in place and the devil has already occupied all that is in the world. All the powers of the land belong to him and soon they will make war against you. All the electronic devices that you own are manufactured by the world government, and all the social networks belong to them. The devil is doing all this to turn you away from me. They use these technological devices to turn you away from me. The devil teaches unbelief in the world. The belief in human science, mathematics, logic, and many others, all these teachings are the lessons based on facts and evidence. Satan teaches the world to believe what they see what is normal, logical, and understandable. And many people rely on his knowledge to live. But I say to you that God's things are foolishness, incomprehensible, not logical, not normal, and irrational for men. This is why many don't believe in me, and many lose their faith because of what the world teaches. You must not turn away from me because of these things in the world. The science of men cannot explain the works of God, the thoughts of man is contrary to that of God. This teaching of logic and rationality you received from the world should not be for you. An opportunity to stumble. I exhort you to be educated but don't believe these things the world teaches you. Let this materialism and logic not affect the faith which is built on the word. The things of the world are bad, but it should not be a barrier for my work. Use them if it is necessary to save my children. If you own something bad, use it to do something good. Many of my children still like the things of the world, and you are persisting in acting like the world, yet I warned you that the clothes that you are wearing, you should not wear them. I asked the Lord, what is wrong with my clothing? And he replied, I will show you again your present clothes. Immediately, I saw that I was still wearing jeans pants. The Lord told me, if you still like things of the world, you don't have the love of the Father in you. And he told me in the present century, Satan uses ideas to turn the world away from me, such as moral philosophy. Satan uses leisure, pleasure, and fun. He uses psychology and he uses governments. He uses culture, the education system, and science against me. The devil uses art, medicine, and the music of the world against me. The devil uses the economic system. He uses cinema, entertainment, and the media as weapons. He uses religion, sports of the world. The devil uses all these elements as instruments in order to oppose me and my people and my word and my justice. When the Lord was speaking to me, I saw a scrolling this scripture that says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. And the Lord said, My children must be aware that behind every human industry, such as Informatics, graphics, fashion, sports, and finance and others, there is a spirit or demonic power that acts against me, my people and my word. The jeans that you wear comes from these companies in the world system. The world system includes also all human religious systems, all organizations, all the Christian churches and pagan ones that are not consistent with the teaching of my word. 
Satan is the god of these centuries that he controls with his horde of evil spirits. His children are the sons of this century. They are the children of rebellion that refuse to submit to the truth. That denounces evil. The world and the true church are opposed to each other. The world is under the domination of Satan, and the church belongs to me. It is under my domination. So you, my children should be set apart. Because you are strangers and pilgrims in the world, you must defeat the world system, and you must hate evil. You must die to the world and be delivered by me. Loving the world destroys your fellowship with me and destroys your spiritual life. You must publicly denounce the works of this world, for you are the salt and light. You must bring my children to me by telling them the truth. The world will be for you, my children a source of difficulties, hate, prosecutions, and suffering. But all this is only temporary because the world and all it contained will be destroyed. After the Lord took my hand to another place to show me more mysteries, I found myself in a stair, where we were climbing. And we finally stood before a gateway of paradise. The Lord said, when you came here for the first time you entered the heavenly world through the western gate, but this time around, we are entering the kingdom of heaven from the southern gate. When we entered the city gate we were walking on a golden boulevard road in a new city different and more beautiful than the previous one. I noticed workers that were building heavenly mansions. They Lord said, these workers are angels that are constructing the mansions of the elect. The Lord said, look and observe and tell me what they are doing. I said, Lord, they are turning the concrete. The Lord said, which material are they using? I said, Lord, they are using pure gold. And these mansions are beautiful, more luxurious than what the Lord showed me previously. The Lord said, these construction materials are your gold, but how come my servants on the earth are? giving the impression that I am not a responsible God who is unable to finance his work. The Lord told me, if your president gives you a work to execute, and they fail to give you money, you are not obligated to beg money in the street. I said, Lord, if I beg people in the street, they will not believe me. They will say, how can the president give you an assignment without the necessary money to do the job properly? The Lord said, this is precisely what my servants are doing. They tell everybody that I called. The men sent them but they give the impression that I did not give them the necessary resources to fulfill their mission. That is why they had developed all kinds of reasons to collect offerings. Often when they make calls for offering, I feel like opening the sky and shouting to the people not to listen to them. You have all kinds of offering in your churches, such as general offering, Special offering, partner. Offering. I hear these servants praying for offering and saying, Lord, we command the wind of east, west, north, and south to bring money. This is what they have learned in training schools. This is a problem in terms of the source of income of leaders. I am sidelined when they organized an event and they don't ask me for money. I am not in their mind, but they ask the people coming to church because they think I won't give them. I said, Lord, when your people give, it is you that give through them. The Lord said, that is foolish. Since you don't want to ask me for money, you can go ahead. Collecting money from the people coming to church. In your financial planning, you never put my name forward. Many servants have learned the wrong theology about money. They were taught to Never ask me for money for they never believe that I give money to people. They think that I don't manufacture money note in heaven to give my children. They think if they asked me for money, I will tell them to look for work. The question you have to ask yourself is, who put the money in the fish mouth that I asked? Peter to fish. I did not ask Peter to fish 100 fishes and to check in all of them whether there is money. I asked him to drop the net and the fish that will be caught, there will be money in it. I said, Lord, 
you sent him to do fishing. Why did you not put money directly on his hand or his pocket? He said, it's just because like you, Peter could not understand. I did not want to scandalize him. For if that money were to appear on his hand and pocket he would throw it away and run away. Suppose that you were praying in the church and money began to fall from the sky, what would be your reaction? You will flee. You believe more to the power of the devil than mine. It is written that a bird was bringing Elijah bread and meat. And this bird was a raven. How many of you when you pray to me to give you food and you see a raven coming with the food, you would not believe that the bird comes from me. And you will invoke fire to burn the raven. My servants have excluded me from their income source. That is why they are struggling. I always make sure that the money that you have is not enough for all the needs. There is no man of God who has in his savings and offerings enough money to do the work I called him to accomplish. I arranged things like this so that you will not trust your offering basket for I want you to trust me. And have your eyes lifted up to me. I want you to exercise your ministry with eyes lifted up to the sky and looking at me. But is it possible to look to the sky with one eye and to have the other eye looking at the earth? You cannot ask me and also ask people in the street. Either you ask me or you ask men. Every time you ask a man don't say that I am the one giving to you. If you keep asking me what you could have asked men, I will cause men to give you what you will never get them to give you. I still have my angels that are walking on the earth in order to finance my work, but you have no access to them because you don't believe. Until you change your theology of money, you will never have access to these physical angels. One day I told you about miraculous provision but you never understood it. It is time that I finance my work by myself and this miraculous provision will not come from offering by other people but by myself. In my ministry, I never asked for an offering but I always gave. You never read that I am taking offerings for I was the one giving. The same way the sky is far away from the earth, so is God's vision far from the vision of men. You will say to people that hell really exists and that if they don't repent, they will all go there. Be careful to teach my word correctly. Then the one who thinks he is standing must fear of falling. What I expect from you is to open the eyes of the blind and pagans and Christians and bring their souls to heaven. Pluck their souls out of the darkness. Tell them that I want to do great things in their lives. You are my beloved children. All those who insult you and make you suffer and inflict all kinds of bad things on you because of my name, forgive them and pray for them. I love you very much. That's why it is time if you love me to preach the good news to the lost. Sheep. Tell them to no longer love the world. They must separate from the world adornment and fleshly dressing. Teach them holiness. Preach to young people. Demand women and Christians. To repent. Don't be proud, but humiliate yourself and I will show you things to come. I am the living God. I am the Father. I am the Son. I am the Holy Spirit. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last.